Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, Session 49, Part 2. I'm still Ryan, GM. It's still the 22nd of May 2020. Here are the players. This is Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, the half elf Druid. Sean, I play Bastiel, the wolf Wolf's cleric. Hey, I am playing Crumbar, the half orc paladin, and I am Scott, who may or may not actually be here. <laughs> Yeah, he's been added in in post. <laughs> oh, I'm Sophie, I play Kit with Anastasia, a wood elf rogue. Hi, I'm Stuart, I play Reach a half elf monk. Excellent. It's weird that every single time we get to Stu, I always expect it to be another person. I don't know <laughs> why, but every time I was like, who is this ghost player that I keep thinking I just... exists? <laughs> I just think I'm going to make up a new game of let's see if I can make Kitty laugh so much that she can't do her intro. Oh dear. They're difficult enough without people adding to the difficulty. Um, honestly, like at some point when my Starfinder game finishes, I'm going to do like a collage of all of the intros because it's so it's zero to nonsense by session oh, two. Um, yeah, it's... It's mad. Like, yeah, like, Shan, if you ever get bored, feel free to, like, just listen to the intros of each session of that game, because <laughs> it's a miracle we ever got RP done, quite frankly. Um, oh, so good. But, yeah. Uh, besides that, though, I, where do you go after the main body of people are escorted back to some nice, kind of, comfy dwarf rooms? Mm-hmm. Mm. Probably the. I'll frame it a bit better, right? You're led into some big fancy stone massive doors. Uh, the attendant who's been dealing with you primarily says, "If you require anything or wish to travel, please, the attendants will be outside for your usage." And he kind of just like nods and then he leaves you to your settling in and you just go in and it's like a massive like the equivalent of like a huge hotel suite but it's it's almost like a hotel in itself that he's going to where it's like a big stone entryway and there's steps up like three quarter steps up so let me just mm. let me doodle right uh, let's let's do that sounds ominously a lot like uh you know we don't trust you klepto so you're gonna have uh uh attendance at all times yeah no they're outside right so if this was like the entryway right there's maybe that like Oh god, I don't know if I can do this. There we go. So like the way it so would step that... up like that to like a second level. So if you just walk in the door here, there'd be like stone steps that go up like that. And then yeah. there's like a kind of big communal area here. And then this is probably like a row of uh, rooms. And this is probably like a row of rooms at either side. And there's like a massive fire pit in the middle. Alright, yeah, so this is just like another waiting room. Uh, no, it's a giant, it's a suite of rooms. Mm. So like, there's like bedrooms all at the sides. Oh, right, like bedrooms, right, okay. And this is just like a massive area, so it's essentially like, imagine like, our royal attachment was sent here for diplomacy reasons. Mm. They would like stay in a suite like this. You're right, cool, got you. Hmm. Well, I'm waiting on Crumbar to join me on... Stu, can you adjust that? Because it's, it's coming in. <laughs> Just do what, sorry? Uh, the audio is coming back through you again. If you can adjust that somehow. Ah, you... <laughs> cool, <clears throat> cheers. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm waiting on Crumbar because I know he wants to go look into the, the scholars with me, but I don't know what he... Is he like in a state right now after all that food and drink? What are we looking at? I know I'm perfectly fine. Well, I thought we were just to... Are we not just to wait here just now? Um, no, we can seek the attendants and go do our business, I guess. Yeah. In that case, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind going and look. In fact, I kind of want to wait for Adri to return. I don't like that she's away. Sure. If you want to do that, I'll enter a century's rest. Always says that you say centuries rest. Um, mm. 
Like you're gonna rest. <laughs> One century. century. Yeah. Yes. I will see you in a hundred years. No, we don't all live that long. <laughs> yeah. I could cure the Mayfield album. Yeah. It's not. That would be weird. That would be like completely arbitrary because she could mm. actually be gone till the next day. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah. yeah I'll ask. Um, well, so we get cracking. Uh, wave the rock. Aye, aye, batter in. We'll go. We'll go. We start to go find some scholar people. Mm-hmm. The scholars not meant to be coming to us. Huh? Nope. Nope, we have to go to them, because scholars don't have feet. Ah, okay. I thought we were meant to have a meeting set up with scholars for after. Ah. Yeah, I I'm think gonna... I'm going to Scott. Like, you don't, we, we don't have to look for information, right? Because we all have it on our phones, and our phones can search it for us. But if the scholars are like, you know, old man in the library, you do have to go to them, because they're like... Hmm, this does sound familiar. <laughs> and then they'll pull out like 20 different tomes to try to see which one, you know, they kind of remembered this or that from. So it kind of makes sense. It's when you your, them and your smartphone needs to, to be left on charge because it's got a garbage I'm, battery. I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. Audrey, but that entire time yeah. I've now just imagined you with a big, like, wizard like <laughs> beard. Mm, yes, let me fetch yeah. that tome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice exactly. Stuff. Yeah, yeah aye, mm-hmm. so let's uh, let's uh, do the scurry over to the scholar. Mm. Reach, Kitty. Fancy digging up some old knowledge with us? Yeah, head over, yeah. Always. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Kitty just hears digging up and she's like, yep, treasure. <laughs> yeah, I'm making space. In I box. never robbed those graves, sorry. What, what were we doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So who speaks to the attendants outside? I'm probably, I'm like thirsting to get out there, so mm-hmm. I'll probably be yeah. at the door. Yep. Okay. Is push, there people? push open the door, and then they they both kind of look at you. They're like, hey, is there something we can help you with? Ah uh, yes, we're ready to co- to uh, continue our investigation. Uh, wouldn't mind leading us to some scholars, would you? Uh, perhaps people that deal in um, arcane phenomenon, uh, history, and so on. Uh, yes, we will lead you to the the Grand Library. And Thank you. Kind of like nods and off your trots, quite frankly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as he leaves, a uh, from seemingly nowhere that you were able to spot, like another like dwarf guard like takes his place. <laughs> so that there's always two people guarding the room, and uh, robotic. These are. It's just really a well-oiled machine, if you will. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, episode nine. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> I have wrote down some suggestions. They're not all good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he kind of leads you off. I, I take it every day, like, it's a small caravan of people, so you all head off through the twisting, turning, like, corridors of forge and all the heat and everything. And the, Yeah. I get yeah. random dwarves looking these up and down occasionally. Um, like they came from like the diplomatic quarters. Who are those people? Yeah, they're clearly not dwarves. Diplomats, motherfucker. Right. Sorry. Um, just that winks and nods. <laughs> this big walking <laughs> machine, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, we cut as you are like heading over to the library. We cut over to to Arya, who's mm. led over to. <coughs> It, it's just like a big kind of cavernous room, right? You can't see that far into. It's just it's it is dark, but like it's um like in the dark. like you know you can see so far in the dark, but like you can't see as far as you normally could. Okay. It's like clearly some kind of magical darkness, similar to like the dark elves employed. Oh, okay. That you couldn't see through with your dark vision, and uh. The kind of okay. attend- the attendant to d- is with you. Just says, uh, "Please wait here," and he kind of like nods and kind of waits for like some kind of acceptance. Sure, I'm not back. And he uh, look he, around. He leaves the room, and then you're left in this kind of bubble of black and white darkness. I guess. Um, oh, so. he's left me in the dark. Yeah. Remember, there there were no light sources mm-hmm. beyond the lava flows in here. 
Because all the dwarves see in the dark, so... Sure, would... gotcha. Okay, okay. And it's the... fine. Adrian, the player, would hate this, but so Arya mm -hmm. is fine with it. <coughs> and uh, as I said, you can only see so far in this darkness as well. It's yeah. unusual, because normally you could see about 60 or so feet, you could say, specifically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, and then like the door opens again. Uh, it's a different door uh, to the one that you kind of came in. It's off with, like to the left, and you're like... Okay, that's came from somewhere else, and the the sound echoes around the room, and you just hear like the footsteps get closer and closer, and then kind of into your kind of bubble of darkness, as it were, and walks the king. Okay. He says, "Thank you for taking the time, post meal, to speak with me. Your companion's story about your capabilities have me curious." Thank you for. Making the time, I can appreciate that you will, would be a very busy man. Many, there, there'll be many affairs of, of the kingdom that need to be dealt with by, by yourself, so I can appreciate I'm, this is probably keeping you from some of them or from your rest. And he's kind of like just like absently rushing, like you know, rubbing his kind of like chin through his beard as you're saying that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Walk with me. And he kind of just like looks at you and then starts walking. Like just into the darkness. Oh. And uh, he uh, brings out something from like inside his kind of like robes that he's wearing under it, like parts of his okay. armor. And he, uh, he brings out this kind of like ring that he puts on his finger. And he, uh, like, mutters something, and kind of like rubs the kind of the jewel on it, and this kind of bright white light comes out of it, and okay. it pierces the darkness, right? And everything's still in black and white, so you know it's not a true light source. Otherwise, things would have color to okay. them, unless everything here is black and white, and <laughs> it's Sorry. massive fields. Right? It's like a massive growing chamber where there's just like an underground farm and okay. there's like various trees and vines and various other things and like you're smart enough to know from a, a nature based thing that this is clearly where all the fruit was grown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he says What do you make of this? And he kind of gestures around kind of lifting the, the ringed hand up so that the light kind of casts everywhere. So, so does this look as the same as the type of hack I've performed? Yeah, well, I mean, if by that you mean does it look like he has cast his spell? No, it just looks like he's cast yeah, it yeah, from yeah. the ring. It like, does... some, like somebody cast the spell I cast, but in here. Uh, no. Like, because keep in mind, if you walked over somewhere that had plant growth grown in it, it just looks like it'd be overgrown, right? It wouldn't be obvious sure. a druid turned up and went, shabam! Nobody moves. Sure. You know? Okay. So, that's it. Actually, no, because I wouldn't this as well as look like a druid sent eight hours mm. on that spell and made it permanently. It's, um, un you're unable to tell if magic was used or not. Yeah. Sure. There's not enough evidence so, for that, sadly. Oh. Uh, well, it's a bunch of plants and stuff growing in a place that doesn't have light, so. Yeah, right. Even and without knowing what I know, I would assume there's magic involved. Even the like the ring he's using to cast light clearly isn't casting a light that is um, reacting to things. Given yeah. that everything's still in your vision, black and white. Mm. Sure. So I would reply and say, I'm not sure what to make of either the the, the lovely and luxurious vegetation you have here, or the rather interesting nature of 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 the light you just created. He looks at, like, the ringed hand, and then he looks at you and he says, You misunderstand. Are you one of the guardians of the forest? 
In some ways, yes, but I'm kind of starting to think that perhaps there's yet another purpose that, that I might have, not necessarily to guard nature, but to return things that have been corrupted to how things should be. He's kind of like nodding this whole time, kind of sagely. And he's like, quite, yes, corruption should be routed out if possible and purified. And again, like nods, yeah. like it's the wisest thing anybody's ever said. And uh, he says, the ring does not give off light, more so it dispels the darkness that we have cast here. Oh, okay. He kind of like nods at you. And why was darkness cast here, if I may ask? It helps the growth of these particular plants. And he kind of like nods. Oh. And he says, I'm no expert in the agriculture of it all, but the the people that are employed to work here have tried to become as self-sufficient underground as we can, given the political machinations of the world. And he kind of like waves his hand upwards, vaguely, as he's saying that. Yes. And he, he kind of like motions to you, and then just starts walking down like one of the planks that lead off into like you know one of the big vein kind of corridors. I'll be obviously following him whenever mm. he, he moves. Yeah, and uh, he's super easy to spot because of the big white light coming from his you know hand. And uh, he like wanders all the way down and uh, he kind of stops and he's like picking off grapes from like a vine. And uh, he's like handing them to you. And he says, you should try these particular ones. And then he just starts like munching them. Okay, I say I thank you and I obviously start having a few of them I'll like look at it you know trying to like figure out how if it's in any way different to the ones above ground and, and then I'll have one I mean roll nature if you want yeah oh so um I don't know if this will tell me if it's in any way Grapes are grapes. Yeah, grapes are grapes. <laughs> they're they're so, tiny and round, and they're all I think, like together. Is it more that this is a weird thing to have been asked to come look at? That is maybe the distracting yeah, point. Is. Other than I can think clearly about the difference of the surface grapes to the underground dwarven king grapes, you know, as opposed to being like, why am I here with the dwarf king talking about grapes in the dark, <laughs> right? Yeah. Also, grapes in the dark's getting added to the list. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god, so good. <laughs> okay. But yeah, maybe like you, you, you uh, the minute you think, actually, no, I'm too distracted to think of that. Yeah, no, and it, it is a bit confusing because, like, he did say it wants to talk about kind of like about my powers, and then sure, grapes in their little inside orchard that's kind of weird mm. okay um yeah so i actually will, I will, will ask um like may i ask obviously you, you would be would be very very busy what what is it you wanted to to speak to me why is it that you single me out so? And he kind of like wipes his mouth and he picks another couple of grapes off and hands some to you and then like just holds the other ones and he's like rubbing them between like his index finger and his thumb. As if again like on that and like kind of you know clearly something on his mind kind of way or he really likes grapes and uh, <laughs> he says I have a strong respect for druidic ways the power of the earth is to be respected you see 
she, Arya nods, like, kind of like, ooh, he gets me. Yeah, finally someone gets it. And he looks around and he's like, this is a... my attempt at securing dwarven safety if we did not need to be part of the surface world then good they they can fight over it all they wish but as it stands we are still dependent on it unfortunately the the reason I come to you is because I have put a great fortune into researching the ways of the druids and the guardians of the forest and the forest that walks. And I wish to learn as much as I can about the manipulation and control over growth as possible because the more I can feed my people unreliant on any outside source, the more secure we are as a people. Do you follow? Yes, yes, I completely understand. And... Uh, you still can't see, like, the top of this place, or, like, the end of this place, or whatever, like, even with him, like, dispelling some of the darkness around you guys, but, like, he says, it kind of turns, he says, I have dozens of halls of this nature, but the growth is too slow to sustain the dwarven people. If you include Anvil in these calculations, it is not possible, unfortunately. And I would not cut off Anvil to save Forge. Yeah, so I'll be... I'll be nodding my, my head about it. The only, like, me, the person, right, in my head right now, I'm kind of thinking, well, technically I could do plant growth for, you know, eight hours and enrich his land and make, you know, the, the yield double. But I'm like, if we do this, he'll care even less about the rest of the world mm. and probably be less likely to want to help us but he could also be very grateful and want to mm -hmm. help us but probably not mm. as grateful as putting people's lives at risk when what he wants from me is to make them safer underground and not have to go up mm. so yeah but you could just make your decision once he's made his about us as an extra bargaining yeah. chip you know if he's decided not to help us no matter what Anyway, we may as well try our last resorts. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So that's why I was about to say, I'm not going to say anything about it now. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, uh -huh. you know, saving this for, yeah. for the future in my head. Mm -hmm. um, Opportunity arises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I completely... But it does seem like he's trying to do right by his people, right? Like, it doesn't seem like he's an asshole king oh. just out to be all oh, yeah, no, right. No, absolutely. No. Um, what I'll do and say for now is, because obviously that's not a lie, right? Mm -hmm. I'll I'll say, um, so far all I've all I've done was to essentially make vegetation in a place that wasn't really supposed to have vegetation and. It was not what you would like here. It was very thick, very overgrown, and very unfriendly for for people to go through it. It ended up causing likely more trouble than than, than assistance to us, and. It was the first time I've done something like this, so I'm not quite sure what things happen at times. I'm not quite sure what, what will happen. I believe I've been imbued with some powers, particularly to, to help me restore the, the, the 
not strength, I don't know how to put it, to restore nature in some places which have been corrupted. So, um, some things are still quite new to me. He kind of like makes a noise, um, like again, like he's listening, but like also like yeah, something that's clearly you know making a noise for a point. And he says <laughs> there is um in some of the books that have been read, there there is tale of the intentions of the forest that walks, and its spirit reaching out through all of the druids of the world. So in turn, they are indeed extensions of the forest. This rejuvenation of the land, my intentions, my people, I think it noble, but to me this is my purpose, so I would see it in the best light. I... And he kind of like thinks to himself for a second, and says, I am not here to ask of you, I am merely here to share my vision. And I'd like nod a lot at him and, and kind of like understand and say I completely understand you would want to ensure you can feed all your people and keep them all safe here and no longer be in any way connected to to others. That is a goal that I I completely understand and I admire how much thought you put into protecting your people. It is sadly something that's not a trait of, of every ruler. Some deserve to rule and others expect to. And you can like nod that and says the only reason we were able to grow here is the quality of the, the soil, the volcanic minerals throughout this mountain are the reason it was chosen for forge, not just its access to a heat source. The, the kings before I had great wisdom in this. If their vision stretched to this, I am merely in their shadow. I kind of like nods as if like lost in thought. Yeah, and, and, and I'll be saying something like, um, in continuing with their, their legacy of wisdom is, uh, is a very no- We lost you there. Is a very what? Noble thing to do. Because it's basically what I'm saying mm -hmm. is they were wise, but obviously he was wise as well. He's carrying mm -hmm. on in, in their shoes in that respect. And he says, You should um, come with me now. And he like hurries past you and uh, like runs to like another part of the underground pitch black vineyard of magical darkness. What the fuck? And uh, okay. you, like, you just hear I him shuffling him. all the way over the stone. Um, like <laughs> paths, and uh, he gets there, and like when you you kind of like follow up behind him, he's like pulling other things off, like kind of trees that have grown under there, and he's uh, he says, "Try these," and he just hands you like two peaches. Okay. And we we fade out I mean, on you both there. There will eating. be a point. There will be a point, you know, after especially since this is after dinner when yeah. he keeps giving me fruit, and I'll be like, I, I'm. I'm full. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Please. I'll be like, thank you, and I'll just put it in my pocket. There's maybe two reasons he can't feed his people, right? <laughs> yeah. Re reason one, you don't have like the ability to grow that much food underground. Reason two, you keep eating what you grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, it all away to yeah. But he's obviously proud of this, right? That's the vibe you get. Yes. But Absolutely. it's not so much a I'm proud and look how great I am, it's a I'm proud that I was able to see the value that clearly the forefathers seen in this, right? Yeah. This place. Also, I don't actually have the capability to realise my dream. So yeah, that's yeah. that's something that he's obviously trying to like share with somebody who has an, an actual 
connection and control of nature. Um, yes. So that's a scene like we fade out and you guys just like munching peaches in the dark, I guess. <laughs> um, and we scroll over to you guys that are uh, like taken to the great library. Um, so yeah, I am going to have to name the master lore keeper. That's what I'm going to have to do. Um, <laughs> let me get a name for this person. Two seconds. Oh my god, it's amazing that I cannot pronounce it. So my generator gave me this, right? And I cannot pronounce that. Because I didn't even try. Dondrobella. Dondrobella. Dondrobella is good. Yeah, I think I think we'll keep it. It's I, I can yeah, it's decent as well for yeah. Guys, Which stone, right? It's quite clever, I thought. Which stone? Yeah. Um, that was my random generator. The rest were all garbage, by the way. Like I'll I'll share the rest on the the list uh, that I got. Uh, so we're keeping that one. If I do this and enter and then boom, you'll see that she's second from the end. Look how garbage the rest of those are. Thramwabella is good. Thramwabella Deepmull. Noble Miner sounds painful. How are you saying that one is hard to pronounce? Like That's the easiest one to pronounce out of all of them. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's because it's the one I looked at and thought that's the one I'm going to focus on from this list. <laughs> um, right, let me write this down. Dondrobella. Uh, let's see. Don, draw, Pella, and then Whitstone. There we go. She's I like Ward Elder though. That's a cool name. What one was this? Oh, the, the bottom one? Yeah. yeah. It looks Elvin, that first name though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Phelan. The Phelan. The Phelan. The Phelan. But yes, so you're led to the. Uh, like the Grand Library, and uh, the attendant says the the Master Lore Keeper is a Lore Keeper Whitstone. You can find her inside. And uh, yeah, they like, push open the doors and they say, we will, we will wait here for your return. Mm, thank you. And yeah, he's our let into the Grand Library. And before he's asked, no, it's not the same place you were. <laughs> oh! Right. Sweet, I just assumed that. I know. Cool. <laughs> dun dun dun! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I am a bamboo. Yeah, I'll walk up to her. Say, uh. Um. Morning, evening. Pleasure to meet you. He kind of looks up at you and goes, What? And just shouts that at you. Um. No, I'm anticipating that this is like a senile old dwarf. Yeah, quarter past so, five, he shows back, does he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I guess I'll, I'll just reach into my pocket for a, this, the fragment of the sarcophagus and try and make this as direct as possible. Okay. We, we don't understand what this is. We need help. That's stone. No. <laughs> I get as close to it as I can. It's writing. And then the, uh, the, the the woman's like, you can clearly see she was standing the whole time. And uh, she then just, like, she got like a big stone table thing that's got a bunch of open books and some, uh, like, a light source on it. And she just kind of like rolls over the top of it to get to the other side. It's very unceremonial. <laughs> rolls over the oh, yep, yeah. yep, she just like rolls awkwardly over the top of the table. And so then, like, nice. stands up and, like, straightens up her robes. And then, like, moves the stone and your hand just to the side. And then, like, goes up to you and then just presses her ear against, like, your chest. And then just taps on you. Whoa. And then she looks up and goes, more to the point, what are you? <laughs> well, I'm trying to find out myself. And I, I lean down so she can see the maker's mark behind my ear. And she goes, ah, Elric's boy. Oh, <laughs> it would seem so. Mm. And she looks over at the uh, the chunk of rock in your hand and goes, "Oh, this isn't made of you." And she looks around you no, as if you're no. missing a piece of stone. <laughs> no, not quite. We found this in dark elf territory. Uh, it's a writing that uh, my companions and I can't decipher, and we know a great many languages between us. 
and she just kind of stares at you as if she heard none of it. <laughs> How about this? Have you got any questions for me? Yes. Uh, how did you get in here? We were led here on an escort from your king. Our king. Kind of like nods sagely. Okay. Why? And we are on a mission for... Well, I'm, I'm going to turn around and because obviously I'm not involved as involved with the demon stuff as the rest of, of the... <laughs> that seems like a good phrase to say, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to... Yeah, just look at the rest of the party like, yeah, I'm out of my depth again on that question. And I just kind of nod for them to join me. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. Who's all with us? Is it everybody but Adri? Yeah. Everybody but Adri, right? Nope, uh, every, everybody is there but Arya. Okay. Um, well, are we talking about the demon stuff first? Or are we talking about <laughs> the vampire stuff? Or the uh, dragon stuff? Say, <laughs> the dragon stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dragon stuff. Well, she needs to know why we're here. Like, what, what brought us here in the first place? Oh, right. Um, okay, I'll... I'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll start up and be like, um, we are looking for assistance from your king to help with the. You're a shiny event. one. <laughs> she goes and up I'll and like just... taps on your like plate mail, and then goes over and taps back on the chest of a uh, Bastiel. I'll just be like, hmm, thank you. I'm a member of the Golden Order. And she looks at you and she goes, why? It was my calling. I see. But, yes, it is also why we're here. We're here from the Golden Order to seek help from I'm your too old to be recruited, son. <laughs> we have another, we have other things to ask you. Ah, too old to be useful, I see. No, there is still much use for you. She looks, she says, back and goes, whoa, whoa, I've had seven husbands, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I was just winking the like... if you went through seven husbands, mm. but yeah. <laughs> Black Widow, anybody? <laughs> yeah. uh, and their names were sleep. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that, we'll get copyrighted. Yep. Um, I think we're good well, on that one, actually. You no, know, that one might have uh, passed the copyright laws as well. Is it? All right, cool. Um... But yeah, I'll be like, we're actually here about a ritual that we've seen in the Undermarch. She then just kind of like looks up at you and goes, why were you in the Undermarch? You're not dwarves. And she kind of like takes in the full group at this point to like mm, confirm that like, she's right. <laughs> I'll be like, it's the only way to get to Forge, isn't it? I mean, I guess so if you're you're walking. She starts muttering to herself. Yes, well, while we were there, we came across some dark elves who were performing a ritual near a sarcophagus and a uh, being rose out and uh, this guy was strong. We are trying to find out about him. She looks between Crumbar and Bastiel. It's like strong. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. And she kind of just like starts like doing that thing where she's clearly like as if she's eating a toffee with her mouth. <laughs> and she says. Why did that bring you here? We we were hoping that you could translate something for us or know a way of which we could. And I just kind of turned towards Bastille and be like, give her the thing. Yeah, I hand her the rock and then I turn around and look at Kitty like, 
please just show her the pages you found. This will go way faster. You should obviously say that with a look, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, uh, like as I'm handing over the rock, as in like everything we found, we should be showing her. Oh uh, look! Come on! Oh, she's a legend. Uh, See, so trying to find old dwarven women are very difficult. <laughs> by the way, very difficult. That's perfect. Um, but yeah, she has the right look of just crazy enough looking that I approve. No bullshit. Yeah, if I can find the one that I was like just laughing at on mute two seconds ago, um, I'll share that too because it's just absolutely fucking ridiculous. Um, if I can find it again. But yeah, sorry. So yeah, is Kitty oh. replying to any of that or? I just sort of look at him like, well, the things I found individually don't mean anything, and just walk off. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. I guess that's everything then. That's all we have. Yeah, you say that's the one. We try to search through this library of cells for stuff. Yeah. Do I see, but she's kind of like the search engine. Yeah, she's the control yeah, F of this place, broken. isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe you just so, yeah, ask the right just... questions, right? Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, we're just trying to like. It's like clipping. Get a direction from her. Yeah, <laughs> like. Does she recognise this? Will she know what section we should go look at to find out more? Basically. This. So yeah, I'll wait for her to look at the stone with that context about the undermarch and stuff. Well, at the moment you've, you've spoke to Kitty and then she's looked at Kitty and then Kitty's wandered off, right? So she kind of just is standing with you guys standing around except Kitty's wandered off. So what do you say to her? Mm. So uh, we, we found a couple of other things down there. Uh, my my companion here doesn't seem to um, think it would be relevant. So I guess this is all we have to go on. Um, yeah. Hey, this was, I found the one I was I'd skipped over because it was just what the fuck. <laughs> it's really the belt. Important. The belt. That is the stuff of fucking nightmares, Ryan. She's like every age at once. Right? <laughs> <laughs> are the thing of nightmares. So. so, yeah, I don't understand why this is a thing, but yeah, like, no, please, no. Where's all the badass, <laughs> like, dwarven women at, right? Ugh, but anyway. I like the one we got. Yeah, it's, it, um, me too. The other thing is, so you're not meant to be able to tell the difference between a dwarven men or women. Both have beards. Mm. I mean, in some people's uh, assumptions, yes. Um, well, assumptions, but in some people's lore, yeah. Yeah. It was never ever stated in yeah. Tolkien's lore, though it was only joked. It at. was. Yeah, in Warcraft uh, 3. Or something. Yeah. Oh, but in, uh, in Tolkien's, it was joked at. It was never stated that dwarf women had beards. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so anything else being said to her or? Uh, if it looks like she's still really puzzled, then I will. No, she's she's waiting on you guys. Like she's she's waiting on you guys. Put like, because you've said okay, that's that's all we had. Dot dot dot. But you've not really engaged her again. Yeah. So then I will. I'll tell her the same kind of thing I told the king about the nature of this creep, the uh, entity we encountered. Don't tell me, tell her. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, right, so, <laughs> we were down there in the Undermarch, and we encountered a being of immense power that was not the Dark Elf. He seemed to work with the Dark Elves, and in inscribed all over his tomb were these mysterious, what we believe to be, letters of a language that we can't read. 
Uh, we believe this entity to be a dire evil in this world, and we seek to exterminate it. it feels like Would you care to uh, aid our quest? She kind of nods a bit, and she's like, I am getting a bit old for questing, but back in my day, <coughs> you know, and she just kind of like laughs to herself a bit, I am kind of wistfully, and she says, <laughs> give me your rock. She just hands her hand out, like puts her hand out for it. Yep, hand it over. There you go. Yeah, and she like has a look at it, she turns it over a bit, she bites into it a bit, and um, licks it, spits in the ground a bit, and goes, right. yeah, it's, it's definitely a piece of rock, but it just didn't come from the Undermarch. Mm. You think someone brought it here? Or brought it there? You, you brought it here. Yeah. <laughs> and she she like hands it back to you but like is still holding it when you take hold of it. And then she points at like the lettering. It's like, can you see this? Mm-hmm. That's not normal. I'd agree with that. That's old elven. Old elven. Right. She like nods at you, like, see? Mm -hmm. How old are we talking? It's a very rude question. <laughs> and she laughs and kind of elbows you in the side, but like, obviously it doesn't go anywhere. Um, yeah, I chuckle. And uh, she kind of like looks slightly disappointed at the fact that she elbowed something solid. And then uh, <laughs> she's like, hmm, you should... You should find an old elf. They would be able to get the translation right. She kind of like nods. Mm. We have books on this, but they're they are bad books. How can a book be bad? <laughs> and she well, says, she said, she yeah, and she sits there <laughs> and she like like rubs her chin a bit and she's like, well. You know when you have a mug of beer? Yes, I'm aware of this concept. And then, you know, and then you know when you have an empty mug? Yes. An old elf is like a mug of beer. And the books we have are like empty mugs. Or like mm. Mock and Jay series. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you like detail. And she's like, yes. Let's mm. go with that. Not a lot of dwarves spend a lot of time thinking about elves. Never mind old ones. She kind of like, See. like, does that thing where she's clearly not eating a toffee, but it seems to be. <laughs> mm. um, uh, it's like her thinking thing. noise. <laughs> yeah, I actually do that too. <laughs> Dead ass. Mm. Yeah. I'm wondering if she'd know where to find one. Mm. Probably not in a dwarf kingdom. <laughs> I mean, you have only ever seen dwarves here so far, as well, and you're travelling through all the many half an hours and 45 minute worths of walks to places. Yeah. Yeah, it's very dwarven here. <coughs> Not like mm. Anvil, it was a bit of a mixed bag, even if it was primarily dwarven, there were still loads of other people of various races. Um, okay, I'll just... be like, do you know where we may find such a Elf. Um. And then she like looks to the side, randomly, hands on her hips. Just like, you know. And then just like again, like maybe thirty seconds pass mm -hmm. after she says that, and then she looks to the other side. As if looking for the answer. It says, 
Probably, probably the Elf Queen would know somebody. Oh shit! Her, her, her you know, her being the, you know, the oldest elf. Kind of nods as if it mm. doesn't want to talk about a woman's age. Yeah. So, for us to find out about this vampire dude, we're going to need to go to the Elf Queen. Well, according to this lady, and she said probably, it could be something else that she just doesn't know about. But, yeah. Um, you might just have to do that. That's cool. Mm. I'm up for that, eventually. Um, I'll just ask you... It's... Or then it's like, is, so is there none of it that you can translate? I mean, I just sort of pop my head back around from a corner. Obviously, didn't wander off too far. Mm -hmm. Is this actually necessary to go back there? <laughs> so, do you say that into the group? Yeah, and then just like slide away again. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> back where? To the elves. Oh, oh right. Okay. Like, you know, nah. Katie being an elf and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Mm. Yep. An actual elf. Yep. We'll get what, a kid whine of, do we have to? <laughs> uh, but I don't want to uh, go home. I don't want to. <laughs> I'll just look at Katie and go, well, maybe if you hand over a bit of parchment. How about you ask might... first before demanding? And then just a side eye and walk off again. Yeah. <laughs> Diva. And uh, like I'll the master, the master lore keeper kind of tuts, like maybe without realizing it out loud. And she says, "Ah, young love." I just <laughs> all, you, all you hear is it. <laughs> I just, I, I just look at her in that kind of way. It's like I've never hit an old woman before, but I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Ouch! Yeah, crumber. <laughs> nah. Nah, nah, um, nah. <laughs> anyway, I will kind of go after Kathy, mm -hmm. and you know, like, dear Kitlith Anastasia, may we please <laughs> have the parchment that you scribbled for on? I hide. Whoa. Yep. So yeah. Damn. And I'll just be like, I like the idea that I'm kind of walking around the corner and I'm already speaking. And I'll just kind of walk around and be like, where the fuck is she? <laughs> it's called playing hard to get. <laughs> Says the old woman. Um, I only had to pursue two of my seven husbands. She just says to herself. <laughs> yeah. oh, legend. She's my favourite NPC so far. Yeah. Nice. Can, we, can we take her with us? <laughs> can we actually? Fuck, we fuck actually it. might need to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, we might need to take her, yes. Mm -hmm. In a bag. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm sure I've got space. Mm. Get these bags of ventures. Uh, yeah, uh, this place is lit, and like in terms of, I don't mean like really hip and cool with the kids, but like, <laughs> like the place has lighting, right? So you mm -hmm. can see that this is like a massive, massive library with loads of like books on shelves and stuff. And um, there is no giant fire in the middle of the library, I think, like the other place. Um, this seems more like a proper big, like, like big warehouse full of like shelves and shelves of uh, books, the stacks, if you will. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, uh, but again, this is one of the few places with actual lighting that you have seen. That, yeah, we can see torches in or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. And she's got like a candle on her desk and stuff as well, yeah. Which means there's shadow to hide in, ha <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to the perma-dark everywhere else, yeah. <laughs> now I notice the shadows more, uh, yeah. There's a, oh, yeah. sorry, Katie, there's a ranger subclass called the Gloomstalker that if you like are in darkness, things with dark vision can't see you. 
You're that oh, stealthy. Yeah. yeah. That's o that is OP. Yeah. Yeah, you're truly invisible. Yeah, it's crazy. Someone in my other campaign is playing that. Stand good. Awesome. Yep. But anyway, sorry. What was the next thing to be said there? Because she's mostly told you guys that you might need to go ask the elf queen who's the oldest, who's an old elf. Um, because um, obviously well, she would know. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking like this is Crumbar's like whole thing with this vendetta against this vampire guy. So I don't know. Yeah, I'll let him handle that. I mean, he's got other he things to ask her, right? Like it's not just the vampire, right? Surely there was more things she's wanted to ask this woman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just want to find the way. <laughs> first. Don't want to like, pull her from every direction. So we'll see if Crumbar gets the thing back. Mm -hmm. Well, he's off wandering the stacks looking for Kitty at the moment. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got. Oh, okay. you've, you've, you, like, you and a Reach are kind of left with a. Okay. It's Lore Master. Sorry, Master Lore Keeper, a Whitstone. Hmm. Reach? Yeah, it's Look. when I ask her where the white is, so uh, information about the white. Sweet. So, what is it you ask her specifically? Yeah, information about the white. Do you just say those exact words? Information about the white, please, computer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How is it? Reach phrases it. Is there any uh, new ones to it? No, I want information about the white. Do you, you have you? information about the white? She looks up and she goes, you're very direct. Uh, <laughs> just after. Sometimes, yes. Hmm. My third husband was very direct. Hmm. Where is he now? Oh, me the cliff. Where is he? Oh, he died. He. All my husbands served in the army. No. She goes, hmm. She's Dumb. Me. If that's what you mean by noble. Yeah. <laughs> Could have had seven husbands helping me at home. To kind of like mutters to herself a bit more. Um, I, Wait, are dwarves like allowing people to, like women, to have multiple husbands? I mean, you don't know how dwarves work, right? Yay, polyamorous dwarves. They're like a drone hive. So maybe it's just the fact that she was thinking. Her harem. Yeah, I mean, books. Other books have like dwarves is only like a third of the population. Female dwarves are only a third, so they would have probably multiple partners. Also, maybe it's just that she wanted that seven people to help her at home. Maybe that is not even a cultural yeah. thing. Yeah. Maybe she just mm -hmm. likes the idea of yeah. had they not all like died sequentially, maybe it'd have been nice to have had uh, seven husbands helping. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So she kind of matters because. What would you like to know about dragons? Uh, really as much as we can about the white, where it is, uh, what it's like, what it does. There is, um, and she like does that thing with her, her toffee, and uh, she says, <laughs> it kind of like smacks her lips a bit, and she says, do you know I used to study dragons? Is that why you were here? And she kind of like smirks at you? Nope, but information about dragons is, well, we are here for dragons, but I don't know. Oh, I don't have, any, you, you I don't have any in storage, unfortunately. I am, we're not allowed to keep them. As a pity. Um, but yes, the, the dragons. She looks so wistful as well, like she's remembering fonder times um, and she's like and it was the white you're interested in not just any white, yes. but the, the, the white the winter king, she kind of nods yes, yes she yeah. shivers at that and, she's like, Mew. and then she like walks away uh, towards a stack and then like she stops a bit and sighs and walks back and picks up her candle and walks off with it I need down some stacks and oh like it's probably gone for about five minutes so while that's happening what does a uh, crumbar and Kay get up to well i just stay hidden mm. how long are you gonna look for a crumbar 
Feel free to have a, a perception check if you want to try and out roll a twenty-seven. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I will totally out roll a twenty-seven. It's worth a try, right? With a seven. Yeah, it's well, a reasonable yeah. attempt. Yeah, but it's it's not a twenty-seven. It'd be like you maybe see me at the corner of your eye, but by the time you've looked, it's already gone. <laughs> But that, that's um, bad for Grumbar, given how much of things he's seen that way recently. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, don't, don't do that again, man. Don't do mm. that. I'm just like... Kenny, are you just going to hide or are you going to come out and talk? Like a disembodied voice that sort of echoes around him somehow magically. Nope, mm. stay in pot. No. Roll perception with advantage. Grumbar? Oh, shit. It still wouldn't probably be good enough, but it's worth a shot, right? Nope. Nope. It's, you <laughs> have bamboozled him. Yep. Um, so as you're like looking around, um, like the camera shots, like looking down the long way of a corridor with two bookshelves flanking you, and you're in there looking around, and like where's Kay? And then we have that shot of something small running from behind one stack to behind another stack in the background that draws mm -hmm. your attention, Crumber. An artistic flip in the middle. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not UK. Oh. <gasps> yeah. But maybe Crumbar thinks it's you. I will go after it. Yeah. So you run down to the bottom of this big stack and you turn the corner very like abruptly, and uh, you kind of get there, and then again you just see like this thing vanish behind like another stack, and you hear the footsteps as it runs away up one of. I'll just, I, I, I'll shout after, I mean, obviously, Crumbar thinks it's Kitty, mm -hmm. so I'll just shout up, I'll be like, like, women, stay where you are, and then I'll just run up after it. So Kitty, like, you obviously hear him shout this and run off in, like, the wrong way. Um, <laughs> I'd probably laugh to myself. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, something's clearly drawing his attention away, and uh yeah, so Grumber, like, you run off, and, like, you see, again, like, this figure running up the far end of the the corridor between, like, the sources of the candlelight. Can I use perception to, like, maybe hear footsteps of the thing is following? Right, I mean, you could try and, like, roll to see... You can just roll perception to see if you know what he's run after you. Yep, uh, you just hear Grumber. <laughs> <laughs> um, officially mental. <laughs> yep. So uh, I will give me a wee second. Ah, bastard! I don't know the spell slots. Um, I'll just start running after it again, and the whole time I'll just be like starting to like. I'm like, this is getting tiresome. Mm -hmm. And just charge after it. Yeah, and then it like, it like darts around the top end of like another like stack of uh, books and stuff and you get there and like as you like run around the corner you bump straight into the child that is Eremos in front of you. He kind of looks up and like gets a fright. Oh. Now when you say child, do you mean like 11 year old Eremos, yeah. Sure. We found. 10 year old Eremos ish. Or yeah. is he 10? Yeah. The ish Teremos. Well, I mean, yeah. was he 10? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the one the, the one of which we found in the tower. Yeah, recognizable. And I'll, I'll just kind of look down and be like, It looks trust terrified. Me to, I was like, Trust me to find you here with other books. It just like cries instantly. I'll crouch, like, kind of crouch down. Like, Aramos, is it really you this time? And, like, it, he tries to, like, back away while he's crying. Why are you crying? It, like, again, there's no, like, 
as much as like an absolutely kind of like wailing child. Uh, Kitty, you do hear that? <clears throat> the crying. Yeah. What the fuck? It's real. Well, I'm guessing he's projected himself here. <clears throat> I You're yeah, currently so eating grapes and peaches, okay? So. <laughs> I know, I know, Great. I know. Must be nice. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel bullied here. Kitty doesn't give me paper. Now Ryan is making me chase after a small boy who's crying. Well, Adri just sat and eat peaches. <laughs> and grapes. Life's a peach, yep. Um, Life's a peach and then yep. you're crumb bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's the title of the episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, what do you do? Right, so, sorry. Me or Kitty or... Both? Um, I'll, I'll let Kitty go first. Um, I mean, I guess I try find them. I yeah. sort of know what direction he went off in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably doesn't take too long uh, to get around there. Uh, so I feel like she's trying to like home in on your location, Crumbar. What do you, what do you do in the meantime? Ah, uh, no, he doesn't like it, but punch him. You're right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll reach out to grab, his, like to like place my hand on his shoulder, and I'll just be saying, "Eremos, do you not recognize me?" And like the kid just like wails more and cries more, and like 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 hits the ground more, and like just like almost tries to like you know use his hands to like hide his head and stuff. Does my hand touch him? Yeah. And it touches a solid mm -hmm. Eremos? It, touch, like, it, like, it has made a physical contact with the kid. It's just it's just crying and he's obviously like, trying to like, yeah. like he's using his hands to try and like shield himself from you and hide and you know if I can't see you you don't exist type bullshit. Mm -hmm. Kid logic, you know. When I re when my hand touches him, like you know, I I can like feel solid <laughs> Um I'm just like, holy shit, this he is real. And I was just like, oh, like kind of like pull it, like kind of like lift him up a bit more and be like, like trying to like pull his hands away from his face, just being like, and he starts to like like, with the hat, yeah. like pull at your arm and stuff, like let go of me. Um, Kitleth. You approach, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see Crumbar ha like manhandling a dwarf kid. <laughs> oh shit! Oh motherfucker, Ryan! Crumbar, how could you? Monstrosity. Uh, Crumbar, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> Buddy, pal. <laughs> Is it still Eremos to me? Uh, like you look over at Kitty. Obviously, because she's walking up the corridor, being like, it would yuck yeah. to me. And then uh, you look back, and it's obviously a crying dwarf kid. On that, I just kind of let go and just kind of like try to, like, kind of like, I'm, I'm, so, I'd still be crouched down. So I'd look over to Kitty and I'll be like, what are you on about? It's, and then, like, as I turn around, I'd see it's like this wee kid dwarf, and I just kind of like, let go and kind of like fall back on my mm -hmm. arse a wee bit and I'll be like and I'm just like sitting there staring yeah and uh, like Whitstone like marches up the, the corridor I am somewhat swifter than you thought capable and which uh, one was Whitstone? the woman the lore master, master, right, yeah, master okay, lore keeper yeah. and uh, right. she like marches up with a book under her arm um, and she kind of like Pushes you to the side, uh, Crumbar, with ease, I might add, and uh, like goes and kind of like picks the kid up. It's like, what have I told you about sneaking around the library? Go back home. And he's like, but Gran. <laughs> and then she just looks at him and he just snaps in dwarven, at him. like, and it's mostly just a case of no is what she says in dwarven for those that speak it. Mm. Um, yeah, I was gonna. Ask. And then sweet, she's like. We're supposed to be baking tonight. Off you go. <laughs> and off the kid runs, like rubbing his eyes. Um, and you just see him squeeze through two, like, 
shelves in the bookcase and off it goes <laughs> and she goes oh no wonder I have white hair and she turns around when she looks at you and she offers you like a hand to get up Crumber mm. I'll just kind of look at her and be like like still in shock is it sorry I didn't mean to scare the the small one she shrugs you know, eh kids need to be scared sometimes and uh, I'll just I know she, like again I know she's got her hand reached out but I'll just like get myself up and like stand up and like kind of brush myself she, kind of like, she shrugs and she goes mm, sit yourself and off she walks and yeah. she looks, she looks say, as she's walking away she looks kitty up and down and goes hmm and then just keeps walking. <laughs> like she Ooh. just checked you out, essentially. And off she walks back to like where uh, Reach was waiting for her. Um, this girl's sassy, man. <laughs> I just turn to Crumbar and say, you saw him again, didn't you? It's like... You know that way? And it's like you can see me trying to like think up a lie. Uh. But then it just comes out as... Yes. Hmm, that's twice now. Hmm. It's been like, more and <laughs> like, mm. just walking off back to the main group. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I'll just I'll just kind of stay there contemplating my thoughts. Yeah, and uh, we click back to like reach possibly the only one waiting by the desk now. Um... <laughs> the only one that's like actually. Guys, this, guys this there's a quest to complete. Plan. Yeah. Well, so she like, walks back and she's like, Puh, kids, and rolls her eyes at you. Obviously, they scream. And then uh, she gets to the uh, the desk and so thump, the book goes on the, the big stone desk that she's got. And it's a massive tome. Um, and there's a whole bunch of like locks and like dials and stuff on it that all seem super int intricate. And it's almost like similar to like old fashioned you know, spin dial telephones where she just starts like spinning all the dials that all spin each other as if it's some kind of puzzle. And then you hear a chunk and she flips the tape like the, the page open, the book cover. Um and she's like, This is my diary. And he just like looks really chuffed with herself. And kind of just looks at reach. She's gonna show me her diary. Mm -hmm. hey. So stuff and about and then she's, dragons then. She starts like like flicking page after page and it's got like drawings of dragons and stuff and it's like, you know, a drawing of like a, a rudimentary like cliff face and like a camp that's been made and then in Vistons like the shape of a dragon overhead and stuff like that. Um, almost like charcoal drawings that she's done. Um, and she's like, I actually followed dragons for years, you know? And then she kind of like flicks through them and she's like, and here you go. And it's like a big picture of like a big like you know, massive dragon drawn in charcoal. And she was like, no, you can't tell, but that's the white. Uh, that's the Winter King right there. She is not to be fucked with. And uh, we end we the session there. Fuck her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, we, we end on the bombshell that is her saying that the, the Winter King is a female. Uh, yeah, mostly, and uh, <laughs> we'll pick up obviously and mostly female. Okay, yes. yeah, I got a lot I wanted to do with it. And uh, okay, yes, uh, so maybe dragons are able yeah. to switch. I'm female now, male now, female now, male now. You know, like some species do. Mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, so that's the end of that session. I. Uh, other suggestions were at dinner with the king, in pursuit of dragons, grapes in the dark, life's a peach. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. There's some good There's some a good lot of them, yeah. Uh, I like life's a peach. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, and I then your like cupboard Kendall is just such a long him, one. Yeah, yeah, you need to believe it, uh, but yeah. yeah. Maybe put like, life's a peach, dot, 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 and then in the description, you could put the rest of it, and then you come yeah. back. Glowy brain. Mm. If that's not too much, like or, or you could comment. This still a great in the dark. It's quite good, but anyway. yeah. 
I quite like um, like a grape in the dark as opposed to grapes in the dark. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm happy with life's a peach. I think that's <laughs> it, it's reasonable enough. And then obviously somebody wants to put in the comment about and then your crumbboard. You are more than welcome to comment on the video since you are all YouTube famous because of them. Uh, yeah. Yep. 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 I. There we go. Life's a peach. Um, Life's a peach, good because love it's it. Like, it it encompasses that we're f like we're on some fucked journey now. After this, we're either <laughs> going to pursue a vampire or a dragon. It's not only that oh. dual meaning of like life's a peach is literally if he can get these peaches to grow in number, he can actually yeah. give his dwarven <laughs> people a life free of the other races. Yeah, it's it's a good yeah. one. Yep. Uh, let's have a wee nosy at the goals then, shall we? Anything to update? Uh, uh, well, I'm looking at the vampire one. Obviously, it's going to mean that we're going to need to go to see the elven lady stuff, uh, the elven queen. So, yeah. really, I don't think we can complete that here. So, might be if anyone can think of a better one than now, I'm happy to park that. Oh, Where on the map are they else? Uh, like, way, yeah, way, way, way. Have we got the map? Yeah, we do, yeah. Like, on the right side of the continent, kind of, but yeah. yeah. You're on the, the top yeah, side, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, we're, yeah. We're like, we're like there. here, so. And this is like the Queenswood here. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, but it's like, at least you just have a lead on that, right? Mm -hmm. Which is nice. Be, I mean, to be fair. This is just to get more information about the vampire, but that doesn't necessarily mean the vampire itself is that far away. We could right. pursue it through other means. Also, you might find an old yeah. elf somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, it could be much closer than we think. Like, the safest way for her to answer that question was, the elf queen is old and knows all the elves, so she would know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The elf queen knows all the elves? Does she know me? Uh, you're not an elf. Fine. What? Yeah. Like, I'm half elf. And as I said at the very start so of this game, half much. elves are not half elven. They are people with fey blood in them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yep. That. You either are an elf or you are not in this world. There is no half. Yeah. Right. <sighs> so, goals looking good? Yeah, unless Andy's got something to replace the vampire one with yet for like a more immediate goal. Like, Mama. convince uh, Dondrabella what's done to join the party. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, I, I have, I'm going to do things. Let's go have a spa weekend. Oh dear. Imagine her only prerequisite was to find a babysitter. Crumbar's still married. <laughs> reach. Take one for the team, buddy. Crumbar's married? What, just reach, mm -hmm. stay behind and watch the kid? <laughs> That'd be worth getting the wish, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the wish. Let Dondra Bella join the party. Yeah. Wish for you, babysitter. Yeah. Okay. It's not bad. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to NPCs following you guys for like reasonably justifiable like uh, in-game <laughs> reasons. <laughs> But because oh, Kitty put her in her bag. You say this yeah. now and not when Zadreka was in the picture. Like Zadreka would have been able to leave where she was. Like that's the problem, right? Oh yeah. Like Zadreka's busy. This woman just sits in the library with like a bunch of candles. She seems really dumb to me, but yeah. <laughs> and also has a grandkid and seven husbands apparently, or had seven husbands. That I have just terrified the living shit out of. <laughs> yeah. To be fair though, like I doubt he has seen many orcs in his day, right? Him being like or a young dwarf. Or been absolutely traced through a library by one and then like shout you that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Any other thoughts on that last goal before we move on from goals? No. Because we've got find a white dragon, which is like the the big next step, right? We've still got the ongoing investigate who or what the mistress of the flame is. And then we've got yeah. the language thing that you guys are working on. We've got the dwarf help citadel thing, which the king says will give you my decision by the end of the day. Uh, and then we've got find out who the vampire is. So yeah. 
you could swap that out for find someone who speaks ancient elven right yeah I mean are we just going to take like accept that that's the only way to find out who this guy is we but we could just find someone who recognises him I mean elves aren't the only race that live for like for a really long time it could be dwarves that know who he is but like you're describing a dude that it's not like you can just bring up his Facebook profile, right? <laughs> so. I mean, he's a literal vampire, so I mean, it kind of is that. Like, I feel like it's there not, is not too like many that though, because him with. it's the thing is, though, you're describing a guy based on like, yeah, so he was tall, he was pale, he had like a pointed nose, maybe, and like he had some like stylish clothes that were a bit dusty, and oh, he levitated, he could control oh. people with his mind. I mean, that's a lot of people in this world, to be honest. Yeah, it doesn't mm. narrow it down. <laughs> Yeah. If you're also, board, you'd be like, uh, and like, yeah. If the word vampire was a common word in this world, then yeah, sure, I guess it would narrow it down. But it's it's not a word really in yeah. this world, so. And that's why we're struggling because. The thing that throws me a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So, we were in the like cave system, right, to take us here to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And in that cave system, we found these guys doing this ritual Dude. on that on that uh, uh, um, tomb. Mm -hmm. And then that eventually led us to a door that led us to a library that was inside the mm -hmm. kingdom. Yeah. Does this not make us think that perhaps the king should know who's entombed in those... Uh, uh, um, cave systems that are, you know, on well, the entrance it, to his kingdom, it could, it or could they could like... have brought the, the the sarcophagus to mm. their, you know, place that doesn't have a lot of people, and they could do their magic there disturbed. It's probably a spy kind of... tunnel, though. It's probably not something the king might even know about. Like the elf dark elves could have just made that themselves to breach the kingdom, like, and no one knows about it. We probably should have told the king about that. About what? how we even entered the library through a secret door. We did. Did we? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, and the thing just that, that confuses me is care? like, okay, so through that library, we got to a place where there was this massive stone thing. So I'm guessing the stone sarcophagus thing must have been there a while. So that we might be able to know who this person is if we look up, like, on that route to get here, if there's anybody that is known to be interred there because that might be a yeah. nice way to find out who he is he's also worshipped it seems by dark elves it might have just been those dark elves but he seems to be a, a oh. famous figure of worship I presume I don't have the key anymore uh, no, no, like, I think you do yeah you didn't take that off me yet right, no, I don't think so yeah I, don't, like, I feel like if like when you open the door and the door like twisted away and vanished and the corridor was wibbly wobbly. Yeah, no, I think you've still got the key. Okay, cool. I was just saying they might have taken that. Probably didn't recognise what it was then. Yeah. Oh, it's just a key, right? So. Oh, yeah. I'm happy with that. I think the vampire thing's very doable. But I'm not... Yeah, it's up to you guys. It's, it's Crumbar's vendetta, in my mind. So I mean, like, go. those are for all yeah. of us, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, True that. Yeah. They are you for know, everybody. So it's like, you know, the goal isn't just because, like, this is what I want to do, so I'm going to take up a goal. You know, it's. Uh, what yeah, because it has to be the, the party do. has to technically support the goal, right? By following it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm happy to follow it because vampires are cool. Mm. <laughs> True that. Right. But yeah, it's like, there's. The, well, I think the best way of saying it is like, there's no point in me going, well, I want to look into the vampires where all the other parties like, uh, yeah, well, I just want a straight up this to go get the white dragon. Because mm -hmm. it means that, I mean, I'd want to go one way and the party want to go another. Like, so so there's something that you might want to have as that goal then, right? So these are obviously trying to get the white dragon to basically tell the red to go help, right? Mm -hmm. Why are they going to do that? What is your plan? For the um, sake of their own survival. Right, but what what's to say that words will make that work? 
Yeah. See, this is what I'm trying to think as well. So like, maybe you just need something to work on. That is, yeah, finding the white's a very, very valid goal because yeah, yeah, it's going to be difficult. But then, also, what are you going to offer the white? Because let's face it, it's not going to do it out the goodness of its heart, is she? Yeah. To give her the wish? No, no, no. that'd be crazy. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine though, wow. That <laughs> yeah, would that that would it. genuinely be unexpected for me. I'm not gonna lie. It's like, wait, what? You're gonna offer her the wish? Wow. What's the most chaotic possible move? Right, okay. give it back to the GM. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm pretty sure it would I be. It. I wish the whole planet takes a hundred damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a planet, sadly though. It's a disc, but yeah. Uh, uh, any thoughts on goal five then for that particular reason? Because you just might need to find a way to actually get the white to care. Yeah, I like that idea. Like the the idea of meeting the white would be so daunting that we need to just season ourselves more and find something an offering, and the vampire is a more reasonable step before we go to the final boss type thing. So who wants to go to the vampire next? Who wants to do the dragon next? Well, I see the vampire as an immediate threat because the thing is, though, is he, it's still out and about there, you know? But the thing is, the demons are an immediate threat too, though. Yeah, but this one's, like, literally at the front door, whereas the demons are, like, at the back door. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to protect most of your back door or your front door? <laughs> who's, who's grapes and well, whose hands? That's all I want to <laughs> It's at the dwarf's front door, not yeah. ours, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, whereas it's the world's back door that the demons are at, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, it's where's just Doria? I know, right? <laughs> Motherfucker. Give her my love and she fucking leaves and turns into a demon. <laughs> yeah, I was, she has a demon by now, but yeah. I'm going to end up having to kill just Doria a bit. I fucking know it. New goal. Go to story. <laughs> uh, just story is one of the other icons, by the way. Uh, yeah. She, she was a bit of a scary lady, so no, let's not make that a goal. It's possible. <laughs> I fucking love just story. Yeah, she's, she's like awesome. my favourite character. She, she's she's the, the only one. She is the like, people's princess, right? She has like, she, it's like, there's Zedreka, not Zedreka and Justoria. That's the only people in this game. Which is like <laughs> Zedreka, Celeste, and Justoria, if I'm translating correctly. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So, okay. I think we'll leave the goals as is now, and then if somebody comes up with something through the week, uh, feel free to like pester people on here in general chat or um, yeah. like float some ideas around, and we'll obviously have a chat about it at the start of next session. Um, besides that, then uh, let's just do a wrap up chat and let's just start with um, let's start with Stu. Reach. So start us off. Oh man, I do just want to head for the dragon uh, and see what we can do. But yeah, do need a bit of information before we do that. But it, other than that, that's what I think as well. If I was a player with you guys, right? If I was in the party, right? I do not think I would be in support of travelling all the way to the Queenswood when we're this close to the Frost Ranges. Because it took yeah. us long enough to get to the Frost Ranges. Um, and we lost horses on the way. So... I feel like I just really don't believe that's the only way to get anything on this vampire guy. It must be something, but that's just my belief. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It depends sure. where that other dude, the the Hellblade, went as well, right? Oh, beast! Mm. Making a note. <laughs> it's hell with um, one L, obviously. That is another goal we could do. We could follow up on that guy and what? go down like whatever he's doing, because he is linked to the vampire intrinsically. Yeah, yeah. And not under the jurisdiction of the king. Okay, I'm liking this. <laughs> I'm liking this a lot. So I put down Hell Knight, it's Hellblade. It's Hellblade, yes. Hell Knights were the things that crawl out of Hell Holes and then possess bows, apparently. Yeah. But it's H E L and then Blade. Okay. As in Hella. Should we. Oh, yeah, yeah. Reach's turn. Yes. Anything else to add to Reach? Uh, 
No, that really is it. That's, that's just that's really yeah. good to just get going for that. That's, yeah. Get to dragon, solve dragon problem, burn demons, save world. Next one, yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we should go to the what's it? It's not the not home. <laughs> the what? It's not the who's it? <laughs> not the who's it and the what's it? Um, yeah, we'll we'll go find the find the red dragon. <laughs> Does it have blue eyes? I mean, probably, <laughs> right? Um... He's been blue as a dragon. <laughs> um, anyway, putting my nerdum away. <laughs> uh, yeah. She says at the wrap-up chat of a D&D &D game. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, man. When I freaking stealth rolled uh -huh. 27, I was just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, right? That plus nine is crazy good. Amazing. That is insane how high yeah. you can roll that. It's just because she's a rogue. It's so good. It's like double expertise. Yeah. But I've not had a chance to really <laughs> use it, and I'm just like, I can use it in here. <laughs> Up here. I'm glad you're happy that you could fuck me over. <laughs> I mean, no, she just led you into a small altercation with a dwarven child. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, going down for long. May or may not get you on a register and you know, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there a stat key? Um, yeah, don't demand my stuff. You ask me for it. <laughs> I did in your head from me. <laughs> no, you didn't. You went, I think we should give them bits of paper to that woman. And I was like, where is the answer? Then I came over and went, I'm sorry, could I please have it? And you're like, nope, hiding. I didn't even say nope, I just hid. True that, true that. No, it's, I think it's valid as well. Kitty likes Kitty having stuff, and if people want that stuff, they have to ask Kitty for that stuff. Whether or not Kitty offers them the same courtesy is irrelevant. Yeah, we don't need to revisit the stealing of the pamphlet again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, like... There's no guarantee this woman's going to give me these pieces of paper back because she's like, there's banned materials and it's like... Mm, yes. I think like your concerns are completely valid because these were mm. banned. Yeah. I mean, the banned books she's on about are probably the ones that I've ripped apart. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Right, okay, that kind of puts things a bit more into perspective. But I don't think Kitty ever went into detail about this. It was all just like stuff that she like learned when she was reading through them being like wait a minute i know some of these names these names are on the we these people were arrested actually for heresy like mm. yeah so yeah like kitty got this because kitty is a wizard and was trained by a wizard and grew up in horizon right the magic city of magic and these were all books on dodgy magic that she ripped up so she's like, i'll take all the important pages <laughs> yep hmm. uh, well, i think them on their own don't really mean anything separately. It's when you have them all as a collective that's when you can summon a vampire, apparently. Or yeah. awaken one. Yeah, because it was and like. And you the... want your own vampire, obviously. Because, yeah, you know, it... just to yeah, remind everyone for that, like, yeah, the thing that Kitty pieced together from all the different books that have to work in tandem, like, or together just in general, the, the pages she took were the ones that complete the text. So she can if she has enough power she could do an unbinding ritual as well why did we take pages and not the whole books she didn't need the whole books i have a oh. weight limit <laughs> <laughs> she is usually oh, okay. wait wait what if you like the size of your bag and you have a weight limit what yes, yes. nice okay cool Kitty had to drop a lot of things when she, you first gave her access to the Golden Order Citadel, like, uh, so that, not the Golden Order Citadel, the, the Order Hall in Glitterhagen. When you gave her access to the armor, she had to drop a lot of things that she wasn't able to carry. <laughs> I was like, I will take this, and then suddenly I'm walking like a snail. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm yeah. not taking this. <laughs> Maybe I'll put some of the things back. But yeah, so <laughs> that is a, she has a ritual that requires life force to power to unbind something. So that's what she got from the, the pages, and she didn't need to take the book, she could just rip out the relevant pages for it. Fair enough. Yep, yep. I, anything else you want to I'm good. I think good. that is it. Mm -hmm. uh, Crumbar? You know what I enjoyed about this session? Was it me and my sexy voice? No, fucking okay. nothing! 
<laughs> it was torment. I actually really enjoyed uh, this session. It was super lore heavy. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Like fuck me, my brain hurts. Like mm. this is, this, yeah. Your brain hurts. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so just my yeah. body. <laughs> so much, so much thinking and trying to find a vampire who clearly doesn't want to be found. Imagine that. I don't know, right? Got out of his box, and then you're like, "What if I just put you back in the box, buddy?" And he's like, nah, "Yeah, I nah, mean, nah." Just all I want to do is go up and hit him in the face with a with a sword. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's valid given, you know, what happened between the two of you. But mm. I mean, he did and just like the... wake up to every day, like murdering the people that will come up, and then it was like, "Why is there mushrooms everywhere?" You know. A valid question. <laughs> um, yeah. Either way, fuck him. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what where we end. Look, there's a couple of paths we could end up going, so it'll be interesting to see what one we end up taking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where is um Crumbar's particular interests lying? Well, I want to kill the find the vampire guy and fuck him up, and then hopefully. That will win us the approval of said dwarfy king, and then it'll be like, ah, you removed a great threat from my kingdom. I will come do the same for you. I mean, sure. He, like, he really thought when you told him about the vampire thing, like he really seemed to care about that, didn't he? So, yeah. He well when I'm <laughs> fucking. Remember, you can you can always go back and listen to that how that conversation went and how you proposed it to him and how he re like reacted. Right, that is something you can actually do to be like, wait, why? Why was he weird about that? So, yeah, mm -hmm. that is valid. But yeah, I mean, sure, you can do that. I guess to try and curry his favor. Mm. Also, I want revenge, and I also want to find out what the fuck was in the way. <laughs> yeah, or the maybe wine. The maybe wine. The maybe wine. <laughs> yep, yep. Because uh, if I can find out that, maybe I can stop having. You know, mad-ass PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> Illusions. I mean, oh, is that why you can't drink? <laughs> <gasps> yeah. It's almost as if it's like a, a, a mental block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is hilarious. So, yep. Is it, can you drink other things, or is it just alcohol? alcohol. I, I, I really enjoyed that scene. That's why I wanted to like make a big deal about it at the time, because it was good. It was like, oh, I, was... I can't drink. Oh. I was kind of hoping somebody would like. I got it, buddy. I got I, it. I, yeah, after it as well, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna." You, if anyone looks, you see Crumbar reach for a goblet. I was really hoping somebody wrote perception because you would have noticed it would have just been the goblet of water that I reached for, not the yeah. uh, mead again. I was gonna like be all like side eye, like watch you, like see what you do, kind of thing. But mm. the conversation kind of just went. Well, that's why quickly. the king said, "Do you want something else to drink?" Right, mm. so yeah, he did it. Also, oh, I loved how nonchalantly you were like when it was just like that's twice now, and I'm like, that she's onto me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I think we all heard you shout Eremos when we were in the little prison cell. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that big a room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's more so. It's like you're just nonchalant. You're it's like, you know what, bro? You do you. <laughs> it's like, hmm, yes, that's twice now. So I'm just like. He's projecting himself to Crumbar, of all people. Like, I mean, I'm glad it's not me, but at the same time, why Crumbar? Why not? Uh, not I mean, hello, I, mean, I actually yeah. like. I know, but I know, like, 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 eh. imagine if we'd phoned Kitty and it's like, oh, sorry, is somebody else home? Like, <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong elf person. I'm, I'll just be there, like, she is not an elf. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just curious to know if. What if we find Eremos and he's actually like the grown up Eremos that I found that mm. I met as well? I'm like, whoa. Mm. Maybe. Could, maybe. Have asked, like, could have asked Celeste about it, right? <laughs> Where's Celeste? I mean, when Crumber had like his weird trippy vision, he saw yeah. Celeste. That was trippy. There was some, my, my, my main goal there was just let's not die, Crumber, please. <laughs> Ah, uh, anything else you want to add, Grumbar? Um, I love you. Thank you. I always appreciate it. Yay! Uh, Bastiel. Yeah, that was a really good session. I've got 
pretty much got to say, like, got to um, exercise every idea that came to my mind, and that was it was good that it actually went somewhere. Like, just trying to make him laugh and bring levity to the mm. situation with that adventure mishap mm. with the the vegetation. <laughs> the way that turned into something was really cool. Yeah, that was massive, to be honest. Yeah. I was not expecting that at all. Me neither. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's it. It was a good time, and I really like the new NPC. Yeah. Um, see, the thing is, I really like the Dwarf King. I'm not going to lie. Like, I really like his, like, crazy she grand plan. Um, yeah. It's good. And obviously, uh, Don Drabella, which Stone is great, quite frankly. Um, I feel like she's like Toph's grandmother. Um, oh my god, I love Toph so much! So, oh, yeah. But, uh, anyway, anything else you need, best deal? No, that's it. Good time. How are you settling in to the game, given that you're obviously still like going through? I mean, I don't know, like, it's been quite a few sessions now since you've been in, actually. Uh, and <laughs> pretty great, I yeah. Think. Like it's um, how do you show you're dealing with the s scale of the questing and the the history of the game, and it's not, it's not uh, the worst. I'm is liking it? how there's uh, there's just like there's real reasons that I wouldn't know certain things, and I can lean into that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like weird or disconnected. It's just like no, I actually wasn't there when these things happened, and that mm -hmm. plays out perfectly fine. It's a really smooth transition, I think. I think there's been seven weeks, I think, you've been in there. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it was 42 you joined. Um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 41 or 42. Mad. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Aria. Hello. Hello. Um, I've been enjoying the fact that I'm, like, suddenly having fruit with the king and talking nature and plants and stuff. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a lot of fun with that. I'm not going to lie, I had loads of fun with that. I just love that he <laughs> just he eats constantly. I love it. <laughs> and um, obviously I do feel a bit, you know, slightly devious there because I could have totally just, you know, out of the kindness of my heart offered to make plants grow underneath and I'm just keeping it as a bargaining mm -hmm. chip so that feels kind of naughty yeah it's an interesting <laughs> angle from Arya now instead of just being nice for nice sake now I can be nice and we can get some progress maybe um, technical niceness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's good it's an interesting to be honest, if you'd already said before that you know I'll help I would have been like mm -hmm. let me do this for you you know Yeah. but this way I kind of don't want to do it and risk him going all like mm -hmm. well now that you've done this we definitely Oof. don't need the ones up yeah. uh up upstairs and we don't give a shit about you know hell holes and stuff as long as it doesn't happen here we don't care we're safe you know well, the make, rest make that you can try making that bargain with him be like i'll help you here if you help us at the abyss yeah but we'll see what his, his decision is first, I guess. Yeah, but he, he, he might have... If I did that this way, then he might have just said, well, I could lose a lot of my forces that way, and it might not be worth it compared to what... Like, what's the point in them having a lot of food resources if they suddenly have a lot of people die in battle, you know? Well, then that yeah. technically balances out, right? More food production mm -hmm. versus less food demand. Just to be cold here, um, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Demand would have been reduced. Like you still can't it, fit it them anyway, though. That, at the I'm, moment. that I'm reducing the demand if uh, if I'm killing his people. I don't know. Yeah, it's not like don't go Thanos on him to solve his like food yeah. po like problem. Mm. Yeah, like hmm, I see. We could double your food resources. <gasps> really? How? Kill half your people? <laughs> No. Yeah, I don't. I'm not that sort of person. Mm -hmm. But there is definitely a lot. Obviously, the king's up to right. He's 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 doing a lot. He's a king. He's busy, right? And yeah. he actively seems to be working on a bunch of different stuff. Try and take in as a group what he did engage with with you guys and what he just clearly didn't care about, right? Like there are definitely a lot of clues within how he reacted mm -hmm. to every of these conversations and 
like as I mentioned with like Bastia, I was like he, he clearly didn't want to be like yes, yeah, that's a rock with things I can't read on it. Cool, you know. Yeah, that's clearly like a, I'm not going to engage in that because the only thing I have is loss in that engagement. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was a case of go speak to somebody else. That works for me. This is why I have these people. I'm a king, don't you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, never mind his bitch and axe. Or sorry, hammer that he's got. Not his axe, his hammer. Oh man. Oh, no. hammer. Yeah. yeah, it's damn cool. Uh, yes. I just think that's going to give you envy. <laughs> I'm going to just, just a make little bit. a version of that for my next spiritual weapon whenever I cast that. It, just like a giant kingly hammer. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's valid. Uh, anything else you want to add? <laughs> Are you? No. Curious what the next session is going to bring now, because obviously we've uh, we've stopped things in a uh, mm. an interesting place where, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're just gorging on various fruit there. You mean uh, uh, aha? Mm -hmm, nicely done. Um, do you mean the fruit of knowledge? You could say. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, w I wouldn't say that's t too hokey, but like. Next session is session 50, everybody. Session 50. Uh, How are we all still alive? Shut up, don't <laughs> question it. <laughs> so yeah, it's you've done well. I mean, the, the, let's put it this way. Stuart, how are you still alive? Is the main question, right? How did Reach survive 50 that sessions? Actually, yeah. Yeah, no idea as well. It's been up and down a few times. Though, yeah. But yeah. You've made it almost. This is when it actually somehow dies next session um, and we've jinxed it. But uh, yeah. Waves. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, it's good. Hi, your healer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes. Uh, and also, bear. Like, let's not forget the times of the bear. Mm -hmm. The bear times. The, the bear. The bear times were very important at times. That uh, extra the health, temper yeah. HP did come in healthy. Yeah, the, the bear force fields. I do enjoy them. <laughs> they were good. <laughs> I, I, mean, you, the, I mean, having two off healers is probably what's kept you going. Yeah, that too. Um, besides that, though, guys, thank you very much for playing, as always. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, I'm super excited to really dump loads of lore in the session. It was mm -hmm. great. I love making new NPCs on the fly. Like, Whitstone's great. Love her. I kind of wish I could see the, the movie of how she got to where she is, quite frankly, because she seems awesome. Um, yeah, I'll be asking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, yeah, I mean, who am I to say if she gets dragged with the party or not, you know? Mm. Um, but... I mean, we probably say we need a dragon expert. Mm -hmm. Would you like to drag along with us? Terrible. <laughs> but, yeah, on that note, uh, goodbye, everybody. Peace. Mm. Bye. Bye. Bye.